Hi, I'm Mareni Ramli or BAM. I am one of the winners for Star Golden Heart Award 2022. Having received death threats and had Gibbons under her care taken away, Mariani Ramli is only more determined to rescue and rehabilitate the critically endangered species noted by the International Union Conservation for Nature. Her decade-long effort is finally seeing results with the expected first release of a gibbon couple into the wild next year. For now, we can see such a positive progress from two couples, Darling Dexter and Ebony Collie. So they show such a positive uh, interaction, they can now share food, they share sleeping platform. So it's now it's just a matter of waiting for a baby. So hopefully when they have a baby, then they can be released. We can't really set timeline with them, we cannot just force them to go make a baby. But um, it's hopefully by next year, end of next year or before end of next year, we can have a pair. We'll try our heart to encourage them. In order for them to be released, they need to fulfill seven criteria, which is the last criteria we need to release them in a pair and at least one baby. So they will be able to create new population in the wild. Fondly known as BAM, the 36-year-old run centuries at undisclosed locations in Rauk and Kota Balut to rehabilitate gibbons rescued from poachers and prepare them for an eventual return to the wild. So what we did at Gibbon Rehabilitation Project is actually we rehabilitate individuals gibbon that used to be pet. Hum gibbons are socially monogamy. So to get one baby that you see saw at the center is actually the whole family is, was killed. So grab Gibbon Rehabilitation Project is not just a we don't we, kita bukan saja for rehabilitation. Kita juga put as a place for orphan gibbon anak yatim yang the family dah mati. So it will take around five minimum five years to ten or fifteen years to rehabilitate individual gibbons and to make sure they can be released back to the wild. Mariani began her work with Gibbons in 2007. At the age of 21, she moved from Sabah to the peninsula and joined the wildlife department as a ranger, of which part of her work was to track poachers. I worked closely with the Gibbons in 2013 when I actually had my first Gibbon as pet. So that time, to be honest, I don't really know much about conservation. I thought by having them, as you know, uh, Living with them, sharing food, it's just to, to show that you can take care of them is enough for, for the purpose of conservation. But once I start digging, uh, doing research about them, then I found out that actually that's not the right way to do a given conservation. She visited Thailand and Cambodia's Gibbon Rehabilitation Center to learn the proper techniques on how to care for the animal. That was how the Gibbon Rehabilitation Project kicked off. Currently, there are 10 gibbons under Mariani's care. I, I started all the things by myself. I built the enclosure. I learned how to build. I learned how to, yeah, how to actually take care of the gibbons properly. I learned the proper diet. So slowly, when people start, I, I gain some attention from people and they start wanting to know more about this project. And some, some of them start volunteering. Some of them become part of the team. And here we are now. Mariani says gibbons are only a step behind our critically endangered Malayan tiger. So gibbons, like I said, they are only one step behind our tiger. Tiger is critically endangered, gibbon is just behind, they are already endangered. And the last population study is around 1980s, 40 years ago. Now with the deforestation, we don't know how many gibbons actually left in our jungle. When asked about her toughest hurdle, she says it was when the authorities confiscated six gibbons in her pilot rehabilitation project two years ago. That gibbons is actually under rehabilitation and almost uh, uh, really good candidates to be released with a proper rehabilitation. It's like they are like um, the pilot project for rehabilitation so that when they've been taken, it's such a, how to say, you, you see for yourself your efforts for, for how many years, you know. To, to rehabilitate, rehabilitate these six, I need to sell everything I have. Maybe for human, it's like having a child. Suddenly, your child is gone. I've been down for almost two months, I think. But then, <coughs> I bangun balik. I remember there are so many gibbons out there still need me. So I get up, I continue. 
Mariani wants the Wildlife Conservation Act to be strengthened to cover crimes against traders selling wildlife online. In support of this, she also calls on pet owners not to buy gibbons as they will have a slim chance of survival if released without proper rehabilitation. So every time I, I receive news or I see people having gibbons as pets or selling gibbons in social media, it really breaks my heart. When they are sent here to our place, what motivates us actually is actually the progress of each individual. When they came here, most of them malnourished, really thin, they can't even really, uh, you know, uh, hang properly because the, the muscle is so weak. Setiap kali pegang, jatuh. So, when we do all this rehabilitation progress and all, we you can see them start swinging, start singing. It is something that keeps us going, lah, bagi kita motivation. And that's the main reason why we cannot stop. Moving forward, I think more people, academicians, NGOs, students need to be more involved and the government need to support to make sure that our gibbons will not extinct in the wild. Known as Malaysia's little swinging and singing apes, gibbons also play an important role in seed dispersal which contributes maintaining the well-being of our forests. Actually, um, yeah, the ideal situation for the gibbons for me is just the gibbons don't need us. You know, they will be in the wild, no one poach them, no one, no one take them out from their habitat. That's the most ideal. We are not needed. That's, for me, that's the most ideal situation.